turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cured. I feel good. Good morning and welcome to Positively Milwaukee. Today we feature a familiar name in Milwaukee, the late Helen Daniels Bader, a woman who dedicated her wealth to give hope to others. And though the world seems hopeless sometimes, her son Daniel Bader tells me why he remains steadfast in his optimism. You probably never met the late Helen Daniels Bader, but if you live in Milwaukee, you know her name. What do you miss most about your mom? Probably the most is her smile. And she was a very compassionate person. Helen Daniels Bader, a beloved philanthropist, devoted her life to lifting others. She left her fortune to groups and causes all over the world, but most in Milwaukee. Bader was also an entrepreneur and social worker. She did an amazing thing, of course, because she left her wealth to the community. Right? That's one of the things that she decided to do, was she wanted to leave her wealth to the community. She was very serious about it. I don't think she had any idea, honestly, what impact that would have over time. I talked to her son, Daniel Bader, by Zoom. He shares precious memories of growing up with a mom who found friends from all walks of life. One of the things that she brought to the table was she loved people. And she loved to meet people, and she loved to meet people different from herself. The Helen Bader Foundation was founded in 1992. Bader Philanthropies has given more than $300 million to uplift people, especially the underserved. As we help each other, we learn about each other, and we all become more human. She amassed wealth after she and her husband founded Aldrich Chemical Company in 1951. And I read that she, you know, she was humble. People did not necessarily know that she was a, a woman of means. My mother had a lot of money because of the success of the company, but she dressed very modestly and liked that. She just liked to kind of blend in and not stick out, and she didn't want people to look at her as being a wealthy person. She just wanted to be a person that was just an everyday Joe. So there were times where she would go in and she'd like buy furniture or something, and I remember she had this um, this Packers sweatshirt that was a little, maybe a little too big for her, right? And and it looked kind of like maybe, you know, it didn't fit her. And so she would walk in and she wasn't getting the service that she anticipated she would get in a furniture store because they weren't taking her seriously. And after, of course, she spent a lot of money on furniture, they took her seriously. But that was, uh, that was the kind of person she was. She was not assuming, she just wanted to be a person, just a regular person. Helen Bader was a lifelong student. Even the end of her marriage did not stop her from growing. My parents were divorced, and as a result of that, she decided to kind of reboot herself. She went through the master's program at the UWM School of Social Work at the time and got a social work degree. So, yeah, that's just who she was, always learning and always trying new things. She wasn't going to let the divorce stop her. She wanted to do things. She wanted to help society. She wanted to be her own person. And so, yes, it was a hiccup for sure. Divorce is not easy. But as a result of that hiccup, she went in a completely different direction. She was always taking classes at DWM, even though for most of it, it was non-degree programs. So she was taking classes in German. And then she was studying at the Wisconsin Conservatory of Art. She studied violin for a long time. And then she switched to studying flamingo guitar. She was always learning. That was just who she was. And Helen Bader no doubt played a role in inspiring a 15-year-old Joan Prince, who went on to become vice chancellor at UWM. You had a young African-American lady who's pacing in front of the building, asking about the building, asking about what goes on inside. And she reached out to her and connected with her and brought her inside and showed her around and connected her to the company. Isn't that what we should be doing? Isn't that what we all should be doing instead of judging each other? and saying, well, that person doesn't have any future. It's a great story with Dr. Prince. And it is something that I think all of us just need to keep on continually doing, you know, reaching out and helping each other, even though we're very, sometimes very different from each other. Stories like this can be found in this book, An Independent Spirit, The Quiet, Generous Life of Helen Daniels Bader. Author Priscilla Pardini traces Bader's family history and follows Bader's journey from Aberdeen, South Dakota. Helen Bader grew up a Christian during the Depression. 
The book notes she was more comfortable in jeans than fancy dresses. And after marrying chemist Alfred Bader, she converted to Judaism. She was really proud of her heritage, and her heritage was from South Dakota and the prairie. She was really proud of being a small-town girl, you know, who lived in a big city. And she liked that. In the book's foreword, Daniel shares that his mom could meet with the homeless, university presidents, rabbis, CEOs, the elderly, and children, always with a smile on her face and a sense of dignity and compassion. We all kind of want the same thing anyway, right? We want to live a peaceful life. We want to have inner peace. Daniel Bader emulates his mom's compassion for others and feels hopeful about our future. We need to get out of ourselves and help somebody else and get to know another person. And when we do that, it changes us. And that's what my mom taught me and taught my brother. And I think that's what hopefully we're teaching our kids. I'm on this earth for the very simple mission, and that is to help other people. I'll say, Carol, like I, I have an opportunity, as do you, to meet a lot of people in the community on a regular basis. We do have a lot of wonderful people in the community. And fortunately, and maybe unfortunately, they tend to be the quiet ones. They're the ones that are not making a lot of noise, but they are the ones who are out there every day helping their neighbor and helping their kids and doing the right things. We focus on the people who are, are loud and causing trouble and not on the people who are quiet and doing the good. But they're there. We're here. Evidence of Bader's benevolence is all over Milwaukee, from the Helen Bader School of Social Welfare at UWM to the Helen Bader Recital Hall at the Wisconsin Conservatory of Music. Helen Daniels Bader died in 1989 of ovarian cancer at the age of 62. I'm a very spiritual person, and so I, believe, I do believe in the spirits, and I believe that she's still with me. So I actually say that to her every day. But the legacy of a little girl born to humble beginnings on a South Dakota prairie will be steeped in Milwaukee for years to come. And if Daniel Bader could talk to his mom today... I would say, I love you, and thank you for all the love you gave me, and thank you for everything you taught me. We're doing well, your grandchildren are doing well, and I miss you. What a legacy. Now, all proceeds from the sale of the book will go to the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Foundation. Stay with us after the break. We're going to tell you about a reunion that will melt your heart. Plus, a cute and cuddly pet wants to join your family. But before we get to that, here's a great learning opportunity for you. Historic Milwaukee, Inc. is kicking off its summer walking tour season. Every day of the week, you can learn more about the history of places like Bayview, the Third Ward, and downtown. Those with Historic Milwaukee say, even if you've lived here your entire life, there is something new to learn for everyone. If you'd like to sign up, we have a link for you on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook group. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. Reuniting with a loved one after a long time apart, that's one of life's greatest moments. Mary Jo Ola brings us the story of a family feeling that joy right now. As five-year-old Benjamin played with Legos at an art studio in Greendale, he had no idea what was in store until his mom, U.S. Army Staff Sergeant Kristen Dodds, walked in. These are the hugs they've both been waiting for. You're so big. Dodds surprised her son in person after a 10-month deployment in Europe. Love you. I love you too. After the initial shock, Benjamin got to show mom the American flag he made for her. Dodds was overwhelmed seeing her family and friends back in Greendale after nearly a year away. To have it actually happen now is pretty surreal. Um, this is my second deployment. The first time I didn't have kids, so it's quite different um, this time around. Dodds' husband is also grateful to have her home for good. Oh, it's great. It's uh, no more exhaustion and <laughs> back to a regular schedule. It would be wonderful. Balloons and drinks added to the celebration as Greendale welcomed their hometown hero back home. And personally, I would never have had the guts to do what she's doing. And so I feel like for the rest of us to be able to just honor her and their family sacrifice is just the very least we can do. It feels awesome and I'm just, yeah, really overwhelmed and it's so great to be home. And thank you for your service. What a better time to come home than now because it's spring and it's warm outside. The Dodds do say they're looking forward to catching up on all the time 
they missed. Well, it's a sure sign that summer is knocking on our doors. Local farmers markets are reopening for the season. Taylor Lumpkin gives us an update. Fondy Farmers Market starts to hustle and bustle in the spring. Director Katie Hasmer says as the weather gets warmer, the pace picks up. In the middle of the summer, it's just a wonderful community space where people can really access a lot of fresh local food. Fondy isn't the only market opening up. Caitlin White says West Dallas's Farmers Market is celebrating 102 years of fresh local food. It's a great resource for all of that, so I think the community really loves to have this in um, in the neighborhood. White says the market is a true destination in West Dallas. Not only as a healthy food source for the community, um, but we're also someplace that people just come to hang out. And markets like these help more than just shoppers. There's a lot of local farmers who want to be able to reach their customers. And a farmer's market really gives them the opportunity of direct sales. There's no middleman. At the end of the day, it's all about the people. I love that farmer's markets build community. I love checking in with the, the farmers and the vendors to see how it's going for them and then hearing from the customers how special the place is for them as well. And Fondy Farmer's Market is keeping all of its COVID precautions in place for now. West Dallas is also checking its safety precautions and we're going to update you with any changes. Just go to our website. An elementary school in Racine collected a few thousand cereal boxes to give to local food pantries. But those students got to play with their food before it was eaten. James Groh shows us how it all went down. But before we get to this huge domino chain, the setup. Students at Red Apple Elementary in Racine did this a couple thousand times on Monday. They set up a roughly 2,300 cereal box domino chain. It's all part of a month-long school-wide food drive. Because in school we're able to give them their meals here, but then in summer not always, so this is a great way to give back. Well, we have the Racine Food Pantry, we have multiple churches that are accepting, uh, Cops for Kids is accepting. The moment we've all been waiting for, let the cereal boxes fall. Three, two, one! Students cheered as one box fell after another. And then at the end, the big finale. That was everyone's favorite part. When it was started coming down, everybody was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you just heard it intensifying the more it came. When the whole triangle fell down, yeah. because it was pretty big. These elementary schoolers put in a lot of effort just to watch their hard work all come falling down. But in this case, it was totally worth it. <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun, and that is proof that doing good for com your community is good for your soul. Coming up, a graduation ceremony in an unexpected location. Plus, you're going to want to meet one of the newest families at the Milwaukee County Zoo. But before we get to that, let's take a look at our Positively Pet of the Week. Good morning. I'm Johanna Shemansky with Haws, the Humane Animal Welfare Society of Waukesha County. I'm so excited to introduce to you our pet of the week. This is Ned. You might recognize him. He had heart surgery. He is a five month old mixed breed dog and he is great with other dogs. He was in a foster home prior to his heart surgery uh, with another dog, a cat and children. He does is a little timid, um, but he warms up really quickly and he loves to play, he loves to go for walks. Uh, we do have him as a mixed breed, but once his nose hits the ground, I think he sees probably a hound mix, that would be my guess. Uh, don't quote me on that, but that's my guess. If you're interested in adopting Ned or any other animals at Hawes, please call the shelter at 262-542-8851 or visit our website, hawespets.org. That's H-A-W-S-P-E-T-S dot O-R-G. We have lots of amazing animals that are in need of forever loving homes that are positively Milwaukee. Welcome back to Positively Milwaukee. Graduation ceremonies looked different this past year, but one celebration took place in an unusual location, Laurel Oaks Senior Living Community. Charles Benson brings us a story of two UWM students who spent the school year living with the residents. 
This little celebration means a lot to Danielle Holbach. I think that we all kind of became a family. Like, I didn't see my family very much, and I know they didn't see theirs, so we all kind of leaned on each other. Hobach and her classmate, Austin Chu, spent much of the pandemic living here at Laurel Oaks. There were a lot of safety restrictions and not many visitors, but Chu says he didn't feel the isolation. I got to make friends here, even though they're significantly older, they were still really great friends for me. Chu and Hobach study at UW-Milwaukee and our student artists in residence. Well, I'm going to miss Austin. I'm really going to miss Nico. Edie Zutz and Shu lived across the hall from each other for the past eight months. She and the other Laurel Oaks residents say they loved having the students around. They offered programs that had never been offered. Zutz was able to make these friendship quilts and try her hand at paper airplane design and jazz. But she really liked writing stories. Having a whole bunch of people contributing to those, they were really fun. Uh, I even actually have now written some poems. She says participating in all those programs helped her come out of her shell. If I knew something was going to be going on, I made sure that I was part of it. And not just simply sit on the Davenport and say there's nothing to do here. These seniors certainly got a lot out of having two young neighbors for most of the year. But Hobach and Shu will miss this time just as much. There is just so much life here and there's so much wisdom too. It's, it's like people don't understand how valuable and precious older adults are until they come into an experience like this and really just are open to it and what they have to offer. I'm so proud to have this experience and also proud that like people really took to it and they did something really cool with it. And Austin liked his experience at Laurel Oak so much he stayed on for an extra two weeks. He said that many of the residents were doing really well with those writing projects and he just wanted to help them finish. So how nice is that? We are seeing warmer weather and more people getting vaccinated. So we went down to the lake to ask what are you looking forward to this summer? Oh my gosh, just to be outside. I mean, look at this day. It's beautiful. And, you know, hopefully Summerfest will get going and we'll have some street festivals and go to the beer gardens. I'm more excited to just take walks and be able to be outside and kind of get back to normal pretty soon here. When I watch TV shows, I, I, I'm always questioning why they aren't wearing masks. And I want to be like that now too. So I'm excited for that. Just getting out and getting back to it, you know, just having some adventures. We're big hikers, trails, go to the state parks and parks and things like that. So we just like to get out in nature and just soak it up. We've been waiting all winter for the aquariums and the museums and the zoos to open up. So yes. Getting out, doing more things outside and just warmer weather for sure. Just getting a chance to get out and camp a little bit and be with friends and family. More time with the, with the kids. Going to parks, my daughter, she want to go park crazy, so, you know, more trips to the park, skating, summer fun. Lots of good stuff. There's a lot of good stuff going on. It's good to be outdoors, isn't it? Now, if you have any more reasons to be excited about summer, we would love to hear from you. Just go to our Positively Milwaukee Facebook group and share your stories and memories. And if you do have a suggestion about what we should ask people next week, feel free to share that with us as well. Well, what's big, red, makes a lot of noise and saves a lot of lives? That's one of our reasons to smile this week. And check out these vintage fire trucks. The West Bend and Sheboygan Fire Departments are restoring these trucks. One was working in the 40s, the other in the 60s and the 70s. Don't they look good? They're all going to be used for parades and ceremonies. The Sheboygan Fire Department is hoping to have theirs ready for the 4th of July. Perfect timing. Some tiny, fluffy Milwaukee residents finally have names, and you help to choose them by voting. We Energies named these Peregrine Falcon Chicks. Say hello to Fauci, Checkers, and Beaker. <laughs> the names all in honor of healthcare workers, grocery store workers, and scientists. The chicks were fitted with bands to track them as they grow. Now this actually helps to conserve the peregrines. At one time, they were endangered, so this is very good and important for all of us. Younger people hitting the links. Junior golf has seen record participation this year. Leaders with the Wisconsin PGA Junior Golf Foundation say this past year, 
kids could not only enjoy normal sports like baseball, swimming, or basketball, they just couldn't do it because of COVID, so they gravitated toward activities that allowed for more social distancing and safety, and golf obviously perfect for that. Well, a local distillery has one gold. Milwaukee's Great Lakes Distillery competed at the International Spirits Competition in Denver. It took home the top honor for its Still and Oak Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Judges called it a, quote, great sipper. Now, this happens to be the fourth whiskey from Great Lakes Distillery to win a gold medal. Congratulations. And a brand new family just arrived in our area. The Milwaukee County Zoo now has three western lowland gorillas, Oliver, Dottie, and Adami. They range from 10 to 32 years old. Now these types of gorillas are critically endangered and this transfer program actually helps to ensure the future of these species. I'll be back with my quote of the week. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you want to build a ship, don't herd people together to collect wood and don't assign them tasks and work, but rather teach them to long for the endless immensity of the sea. Our quote of the week comes from French writer Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. And that's a good reminder that it's all about vision, so don't get so stuck on the little stuff that you forget the overall goal. Keep that message in mind this week, and as always, stay positively Milwaukee.